we have Cole Eisenhower. Cole, uh, muralist, musician, artist, what do you prefer? Renaissance man. Renaissance man. Renaissance, yeah, my buddies used to call me that, you know. Uh, Billy Art, Joel. Artist above everything. Artist think, above everything, yeah. okay. So Cole and I met in a van down by the river with Todd. Yeah, yeah, and I think that uh, that was through the music, and then I think that, uh, I was trying to think back the first time I met you, was it at, uh, was it like an artist selection committee? Was it... Were you applying yeah. for the, for that grant downtown or for that mural downtown, it, I should it, say? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think so. And so learning that other side of you, and I think I'd maybe seen a piece that you'd done, but I didn't know mm -hmm. to the scale that you were working at that point. I was point. pretty yeah, new to the scene. It was it was all pretty new to me. Yeah, what, so. what's the location of your downtown mural right now? Um, key, it's key, across key from, it's on Kiesel. On Kiesel, Kiesel. Yeah, across right from the, the amphitheater. Yeah. 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 What's the name of that piece? Uh, you belong. You belong, and yeah. so that's where we first met was on that. And so I love that yeah. we that we met through the music and we met through the arts as well. Yeah. And so that's probably a good place to start um, because we could touch on your background uh, as far as your, your sort of formal education as an artist, mm -hmm. but then more importantly is what you did with that outside. So you finish school and then what happens? Uh, it was it was quite the journey in in college. Uh, track was a big focus. I was talking about that before the podcast. Uh, you know, I was an athlete first. Art was kind of second. It kind of came naturally in the family. So I was like, oh, you know, I'll get a degree in it. Um, I met a uh, professor down there that later became my mentor. And then I, you know, became really enthusiastic about it. I saw the possibilities of what I could do. Um, I was scared of painting and everything during college. So I just focused on drawing, really trying to be more informed on you know, realism was like my, my main thing. So drawing was like my only focus in college. But once I got out, I realized like, I was like, you know, if I want to make it in the fine art business galleries and stuff, I need to, I need to learn to oil paint. That's where the money's at. So I started teaching myself color theory and watching videos and stuff. Never painted in college, just taught myself to paint. So it was about, I think, uh, let's see, about two or three years of painting before you know, I helped my mentor on a big commission for Adobe down in Lehigh, mm. which was like pretty transformative, uh, big project. We well, it's cool. We have Adobe down. in the state. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Seriously. And it was, it was a big privilege. They built this new addition to the building and going down there and working on these huge panels. I still need to post about it, but uh, they're pretty. Are you able crazy. to post about it now? I wasn't for a little while, but now I now I think I'm cool to do that because they're they're super impressive, like paintings that we, we need to see it on. collectively. I've had an opportunity to see some of those photos, but yeah, the rest of the world really yeah. does need to see it. They're, Even if we need to just sneak into the building, they're pretty crazy. They're, yeah. I need to go. I need. I want to go down and get some some pictures with the with the pieces and stuff. But after that, I did a couple small little murals, and then uh, you know I applied for some other uh, mural opportunities here in Ogden. That one down Grant. Um, obviously my experience didn't, uh, you know, warrant me to get the opportunity probably, but, uh, I had encouragement from some, from some people on the Ogden, uh, art council. And then, uh, I applied for the market star one and somehow slipped through the door. And apparently my interview somehow was, was really good. My presentation and, uh, um, they gave me the opportunity and that, that project itself has just launched my career I guess you could say it's only been a few years now I guess but uh it's really kind of paved the way for me to like really you know get involved in in murals which I never would have thought I'd ever do I was really just going to be a fine artist but uh yeah the mural thing it's uh I don't know I, re I really love it it's a challenge because I'm not used to it it's really more about design than the actual painting I'm very confident in my you know ability to paint and draw and stuff but the designing and stuff is just it's a little twist to it so it's it's exciting. It's it's coming from you know a formal education out here. I never would have thought I'd be doing murals. It's like it's so it's so different than what I thought I'd be doing. So what were you going through? What was going through your head when you got that gig? Because that uh -huh. uh, it's one thing to apply. It's one thing to put together a package, get in front of a bunch of strangers mm -hmm. and talk about your work, and you were pitching an I and ideas. And sometimes I know with murals, there's a little bit of a design by committee, which I'm not always yeah. a huge fan of, but sometimes mm -hmm. that does happen as well. And so when you got the call, like what was going through your head? What was those first steps? Like I want to know those. Oh, 
Well, I had some initial stuff in my presentation, like my initial concept revolving around the theme, You Belong, which is, uh, for anybody listening, about inclusiveness, um, involving everyone, you know, everyone belongs. I mean, it can be simplified and it can also be extrapolated into something, you know, a little more complex. So, you know, my process now, I think with like uh, any mural application or coming up with ideas, I go in my sketchbook and I start jotting down kind of like a little design tree, you know, springing off ideas from a you know, the, like with this, uh, you belong, you know, what does that mean? And I start breaking off like different meanings, uh, what, what could correlate around, uh, the phrase or whatever they're trying to go for. Um, and in this case it was just, you know, some way to convey, you know, all the whole spectrum of, of people or, uh, personalities and, and stuff like that. So I, it was, it was a crazy process. I can't even remember it. I was so stressed. <laughs> it was nuts. I came up with so many different designs for for that thing, and how and, many? How many? Oh, probably. I mean, probably close to like close to ten. But like, even the one I submitted, they actually they actually like uh, refuted it. They were like, "We want what you showed us in the presentation." So I spent a bunch of time on one concept, and it totally got just totally, mm. they axed it. They were like, no, this is, we don't want this. We want what you showed us in the presentation, which was like something I mocked up way last minute for my submission, which is so ironic, you know? And uh, Todd, does that happen a lot? or how did, what? It certainly can. I think more than anything, it's, it's whoever is on that selection group, whatever they connect to. So maybe it's something yeah. that you threw together in a minute. Maybe it was mm -hmm. a work that you did 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it was something, you know, that you did at, at Adobe, like elements of what you're capable of. Yeah. And sometimes it's just like, okay, you got that skill set, so you got the gig, but we're just going to have to even invite you back for the idea. Yeah. Like, meaning you, you may not even identify with, you know, a pitch yet, but you really want to invest in this person, right? Mm. And so at least they had something to start with, even yeah. if it was your your drawing. But that's a learning that. I think so. yeah. See, and I feel like I feel like my as far as my interview process went, I definitely leaned on my ability. I can show that I can paint, but they had to take a risk in like trusting me to design something cool, you know, to like represent the company, conceptualize it. Yeah, conceptualize yeah. it, which is I'm finding to be the most difficult part is like what design is gonna you know work for whoever I'm, you know, doing the mural for or whatever it is. Cause I know I can paint Does it. Does that get into weird stuff? Like, don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me how to live my life and paint. Uh, what's the, where's the line? Well, that's what, that's what Todd was saying. Yeah. Like design by committee. Yeah, I don't know. It gets kind of tough. You know, you kind of want to do your own thing. You want to be expressive. I still don't know what my voice is. You know, if you yeah, look but at, you got like a committee that's telling you what I, they yeah, want. Yeah, well, I think more times than not, the heads of the committee will hopefully try to rein in the group itself. You know, yeah. but sometimes there are fair notes to give to the mm -hmm. artist, right? And let's be honest, it is a dynamic where, you know, in this case, it was MarketStar was was paying you mm -hmm. for work done, right? Yeah. And so it wasn't just necessarily Cole coming up with. You know, you get this or I'm walking. Yeah. It's a, more of sort so of. So how does it work? They find an artist that where they like what they've seen mm -hmm. and then they say, give me some ideas. And then they just feel like they can just say, OK, well, now just do this. Well, tip, I mean, with a proposal, if they're doing like an uh, is it an RFP or uh, RFQ. Some, yeah. Sometimes it's for the, the talent alone. Yeah. And then you pitch an idea. So it's just okay. like you got the gig just on the talent alone. And sometimes it's simply. You pitch some ideas, and it's just like, okay, we're going with that design. Mm -hmm. It might be a little tweak, but mostly it's any of it. It's like we that. just like this person. The call is very different. Well, yeah, it depends on the call. Like sometimes they give you more information than others. Like MarketStar gave a pretty thorough uh, explanation of what they were looking for. Some jobs you don't know what they want mm. necessarily, and it's kind of like you know you just throw whatever your resume is in and hope maybe you get picked, and then you find out kind of later. And you go through a process. They're pretty typically they're pretty thorough in explaining stuff, but uh, you but know. you're but you're an artist. You said artist above all, and this is the opposite of fine art because of fine art you would just do you right. Yeah, and so I mean I still kind of do that, but yeah, 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 yeah. So how do you feel about this? Like doing murals? Yeah. I love. I I I think I love it. The challenge of it, I think, is what I like. Fine mm -hmm. art. Um, you know, I know I can do it. I can do realism really well. Um, 
I think the bottom line between either of them is really what am I painting? The best muralists, they get to paint whatever they want. You know, some people just come to them for what they paint, you know. Um, I'm sure they go out for calls, you know, with businesses and corporations and stuff like that. But the, the best ones that I follow and I've kind of, I've scoured Instagram for them, those dudes, man, they just, they have a style, they paint certain things and people, they just get paid to paint them. Well, Todd knows. Talk, I mean, talk about the, the Monarch mural here. Uh, Jane Kim's, yeah. Jane Kim. And that was one where she... That's, she, that's her MO. That's what she does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that even just with the opportunity of that first mural of yours across from the amphitheater it really set a precedent for your style mm -hmm. because I don't think you really compromised on that level of detail. Like that sort of those, some of those fine art qualities, obviously there's, there's elements that you can only do on a, maybe a large scale like that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think that you still stay true to your style, mm -hmm. um, which in turn I would assume helps you get the next gig. Helps yeah. You get the gig after yeah. that. It's all sort of the momentum of, what will help me get to that next level? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I put so much effort into that mural. I was out there every day. I, put, I don't even know. I should have tracked the hours. I, I didn't. But, uh, you know, people's more of a specialty for me. That's what I did for so long. I'm kind of doing some different stuff right now as far as that fine art stuff goes. But, uh, you know, I knew I could impress. And I knew I know I know how to paint well enough. And I know people, um, you know, the anatomy and how to do faces well enough that I knew I could nail it. So I, like, put everything I had into it because I knew that this would launch you know, at least a few other opportunities. And so far it's kind of just compounded and they mm -hmm. kind of keep coming, you know, so. You know, and that, yeah. that really parallels with, <clears throat> with, you know, all the, all the behind the scenes work, right? Mm -hmm. I'm driving down Kiesel Avenue and I see your mural and I'm like, wow, that's beautiful. It's great. He went up there and he painted it. But what I don't see is all the hours and all the projects mm -hmm. and all the different pitches. You mm -hmm. said 12 different pitches and it's like, yeah. Nobody knows that. Yeah. How do we how do how do we get people to know how much work you truly put yeah. into something? And here's like the that. secret too on that too is the fact that as a, an arts advisor, which I did for years for undergrad students at the U or at the Weber State, and then sort of working my way into an arts administrator, you know, type position, it's advocating for artists, but it's also being protective of their time, which equals money, and how they can make a living with, you know, with doing the art that they mm -hmm. do and not doing it for essentially nothing right yeah. unless that they are full out you know making that a little bit of that compromise i'd never ever like i hate that phrase you know doing it for the for what, exposure what it, for the exposure mm -hmm. and let's hope people just aren't even really doing that anymore that was <laughs> yeah. very big for a long time and so hopefully you're not doing that but at the same time if you do want to set a bar for yourself when you're kind of getting things started you're going to make some compromises personally but at the same time when i see a work of art i want to think no doubt that took a lot of time. What I love now about a lot of murals is that there's often like a time lapse camera set up. Mm -hmm. I love that because that gives you a sense of just, I like it seeing it from that base layer wall kind of working its way forward. But at the same time, I just want the artist to profit from the time that they spent on it. Yeah. Right? If you're there for 20 hours a day, right? Which could easily happen, right? Yeah. If you're on like a deadline or yeah. something like that. Um, if you were to break down your hourly at the end of this, it's like, <laughs> well, do it. maybe I have work for the next hour, five yeah. years. <laughs> Eight dollars an hour yeah. sounds nice. Yeah, no, I'm sure it's probably less than that. And so I think more times than not, it's uh, it's how do you get to that next level mm -hmm. and also protect your time. Yeah. And I mean, well, and the thing, the transformation from, uh, you know, going from like, you know, my studio stuff to murals, it's a lot more labor intensive. Now, that was different because I had a scissor lift. But like some of these jobs, you know, I did a, a few for roosters. I'm up and down ladders and just like moving stuff. And it just is, it becomes laborious. My arm's killing me. My neck's killing me. You know, I'm not saying it's any, it, it's harder than like, you know, an actual labor job. But there's another aspect to it that, you know, in my, you know, my fine art studio, I can Dude, sit sacrifice in Sacrifice the body, Cole. Let's I know. Go. Hey, I'm all about it. I like it. I like it. But like in my fine art studio, you know, I can like, I can sit there. I can sit in a chair. Yeah. I can have like, we were talking you got earlier. got good music going. Yeah, there. music going. Yeah. I got maybe like a podcast or show. I've been watching <laughs> yeah. a bunch of Seinfeld lately while I'm drawing. <laughs> so like, you know, you have those luxuries. When I'm out in the mural, it's like I'm up to whatever the conditions are as far as weather. And it was hot when I was doing it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a different ball game. How does kind that different. affect like like the paint itself, right? Like, oh, it was it, drying like a, quick. Yeah, like yeah. That's so, that's an element that I've never thought about. Yeah, so it it just kind of I guess it would depend on what I'm painting over there. I the way I blended was like through different gradients, so it was it was it was, it was a little more graphic, but like 
I don't know. You know, it just depends. It depends what I'm painting. Like I'll the, tell you what, all that applies into the choices. I think that's where a lot of those, a lot of to that scale, I think that's where a lot of those artists use spray paint probably for certain yeah, reasons, right? Yeah. Well, you I, take certain things into consideration. It's just like, well, I know I'm used to this and I can't use this, mm -hmm. but what can I find that's like maybe equivalent to that mm. on a scale that's, you know, 20 yeah. times what I usually do? I wish I knew how to use spray paint at the time. Oh, just wait. Saved I'll me. bet you'll do something. I, have I'm you, going have you to. used it? No, I'm planning to. Yeah. I have some murals coming up in a couple months and I'm like, ah, man, spray paint just saves time because you're, because this is the other thing with, uh, you know, is murals. That like a, you use it like as a base and then. No, no, you can go, oh man, I have some artists I got to show you. Okay. You can get so good with, I mean, it's like airbrushing. Yeah. Like oh, they, yeah. they make oh, the can. Get good. Yeah. Uh. They make the can so versatile. They have like a low spray to yeah. them. So you can get like a, a really nice, like use a subtle cardboard TV. or anything to sort of. Yeah. Like... They'll use stuff. Yeah. There's different techniques. Have you seen the videos? Don uh, Rymax for those Grant murals. He used a lot of yeah. spray paint on them. Did you ones. learn? Did you watch Don work when he was here? I stopped for a little bit. I talked to him and the other dude that was helping him. Just even to get an understanding or even just yeah. the, the idea of that kind of scale. Yeah. yeah that's that got to be speed. helpful, right? To have somebody, oh, yeah. so have somebody at that level here in town. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and like I was saying, like with murals, you're dealing with texture is another thing. Like I'm doing a, I'm doing a mural for the Echo Center up 26th Street and uh, it's on stucco. And with a brush, I mean, even with the concrete over at Market Star, I'm I'm very OCD, so I was stabbing the paint in the holes and stuff. It just mm. took forever to get it exactly what like I wanted. With spray paint, you have no yeah. problem. You're yeah. right in there, you know, and then you just worry about sealing it and protecting it. But uh, there's different ways to. I mean, there's so many different methods. I follow so many different artists, but the best ones that I found, spray paint. You know, it's always mm. useful to use a brush, be able to use a brush, and I know I can fall back on that. But spray paint's time saver if we're talking money and time yeah and uh you know just the ease of it you know i'll have to work out my finger a little bit but <laughs> you know your finger lifts well yeah. while we're still <laughs> talking about murals for a second tell me about your new gig down in salt lake that's pretty exciting uh when's yeah. that coming up it's a mural fest yeah mural fest so it's the first two weeks of may so no i don't have any details now don't know what business i have or anything like that but they work with uh it's it's south salt lake they work with uh local businesses out there they're they're still finding walls right now but uh businesses apply um you know you get paired with one and then you work with the owners and the uh it's another oh, committee this is, this is amazing they've yeah. been doing it for years yeah and yeah, it's they got artists some... from uh nationwide uh, or is it world. global it's global yeah, yeah yeah they had uh gosh i can't even remember how many applications they had this last year it was hundreds and hundreds. And they're like, wait, Cole from Ogden? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't think I'd get picked. I didn't think I'd get picked. So there's a lot of pressure right now. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing yet. So I'm yeah. just kind of up in the ether, kind of just waiting to hear. Now, do they give feedback on what they want to, or can you do whatever you want? On well, this? as far as I can see right now, you get paired with the business and then you work, you work with the owner, but then okay. it still has to get passed by the owner. Okay. Whatever design it is has to get, uh, you know, uh, Accepted by the owner and the committee. Yeah. So yeah, I still don't know that yet. I'm I'm excited for it. It's going to be crazy because there's some big there's some big muralists coming in. Are you for me, murals are the the most impactful when they are, you know, when the community, when the neighborhood, when that block is taken into account. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. If I were to bring in something that is important to me right here, down in the creative district, and put it down in South Salt Lake, that would make no sense. Right. Yeah, in fact, sure. that would be kind of almost a little offensive to that area of Salt mm -hmm. Lake, right? And so I think that that interaction, I actually love that you're going to work, you know, sort of hand in hand with the business owner. Yeah. I, I was just thinking that's like when people go into like to get a tattoo and they're like, I don't know what I want. Just do whatever. <laughs> you know, do they ever do that with a wall? You know, like, I don't know. Just put something on it. You know, uh, uh, Roosters was kind of that way. You know, they, yeah. they knew they wanted something to the brand. You know, for the, you know, I worked with at the one in Layton, so I knew, like, you know, I'm going to do something with the rooster. I'll do something stylized for the rooster side. And then the coop, the new uh, bar they opened up next door, they, it was it was free reign. You know, the owners, they gave me. Free, just like the roosters. Yeah. Free reign. Yeah. <laughs> free rage. It's free rage. It's free reign, yeah. Free range, yeah. Yeah, they gave me a lot of freedom to do what I wanted, and we didn't have a lot I of hiccups, do. you know, with, yeah. with the designs and stuff. So that was, like, super cool. I got to kind of do some different stuff, so. You know, and I'm learning along the way. So anyone that gives me an opportunity, like I'm grateful, you know, and everybody's stuck their neck out for me out here in Ogden. The Ogden Art Committee has been great. Is this a great. full time job for you? I'm I'm getting there. Okay. I'm getting there. I do some part time stuff, family yeah. business stuff, you know. Okay. But uh all this art money I save it. 
I can I make I make enough from it that I could live from it, you know. But uh, it, the the you know the ceiling is the limit. I, you know I'm I'm very ambitious, you know, and I'm I'm hardworking. It, I if I didn't do the part time stuff, I could do a lot more than I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of just helping until that blows over. So Todd, how but, hard is that to become a full time? Artist as an as an artist, easy breezy, easy breezy piece of cake. That's <laughs> why we liar. all do it. Yeah, that's why they all do it. That's why they all do it. It's an insane amount of work that involves, like, doing all the things. Yeah. The fact that you're you're all the things we mentioned, the Renaissance man, the the musician, you're doing some. We didn't even talk about that. Yeah, no, that's we can certainly talk about that as well. But the fact that uh, sometimes it is finding, you know, gosh, if if you can focus on just the one thing, and, yeah. and that may happen. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, you know, who knows? It's like, I'm starting to see maybe a trend, you know, murals blow up in the summer, you know, outdoor stuff, obviously dormant in the winter. Um, there's interior murals. I have a few kind of... Here, but lined, in yeah. F- warm, yeah. Florida, Arizona, whatever. Well, you can, see, yeah. and that's the, that's the other thing, you know, the more opportunities I get, and I need more large scale ones like the one in Ogden. So I'm hoping this one in South Salt Lake is a decent sized wall. Mm-hmm. The more I get, then the better chance I have when they have uh, national... Um, RFQs, you know, request for mm-hmm. qualifications, because I can apply out of state and fly out somewhere and do some. The best muralists I follow, they go all over. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're in different countries around the world mm-hmm. doing murals, and it's like, yeah. man, if you land some, and they have a couple websites, uh, Call for Entry, you can go on there and look at the budgets for these murals. Man, if I could land a couple big ones, I yeah. only need to do two or three a year. Right. So, I, would so, love so to how- see, I would love to see you leave. Yeah, I would, yeah. Get me the, too. Get out of here. What me are you too. doing, Cole? I mean, for a little while. Then you come back again. I, Todd knows. That, I mean, there's a lot of money out there for these things, you know? Well, okay, yes. And um, how are you going to feel if all of a sudden your full-time job is muralist, not fine artist? I don't think I'd be too upset. I See, think, to me, I think that, that that fine art part falls back into the murals as well. It does. It and does. I don't think it's so cut and dry, honestly, anymore, mm, yeah. as far as calling one thing this and one thing this. I think yeah. that it's is one more Is, is fine art more prestigious or something? Is well, it depends what you're doing because, and it depends what type of uh, fine art you're involved in. There's there's the you know classical, hyper-realist, um, but you know if you're talking more of contemporary galleries, a lot of them, they can kind of bleed into the mural art. I follow some guys that do some stuff in galleries. They're fine artists, but it could easily be a mural. So like, mm-hmm. it just, it just depends, you know. There's a lot of street There's, artists that show their work in gallery mm-hmm. spaces. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I love those artists as yeah. well. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it really does take it out of the context, which is kind of fun sometimes too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. There's a lot more crossover than you, than you might yeah. think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just want like the underground fine art stuff where you're selling things to like Russian oligarchs and <laughs> stuff like that. Like, what's, <laughs> I want that too. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, because like, that's when you make a lot of money. Yeah. 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 So basically, people out there, that's what we're saying. That's, that's, you know, that's, just work that's long enough that you could sell to yeah. Russian oligarchs. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm See, sorry. I feel like you know, with murals and the fine art, they they do bleed together. Um, you know, the skill that I learned just focusing on realism and and capturing whatever I'm drawing, um, really learning the technical scientific side of it, it definitely helps me in the mural part because there's muralists that don't have that mm. background. And I know I can draw and paint whatever I need to. Um, that's where I like fall back. The designing and yeah. finding a style is honestly the hardest part right now. What have you learned from like street artists, um, the spray paint on train kind of artists, sort of you know the 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 legit like mur- not muralists, but uh-huh. you know the the just the r- street artists I guess. like yeah. graffiti artists. Yeah, too? graffiti artists. I feel like. I don't know. The biggest thing I pull away from all I know is they know how to use spray paint. Like, no, yeah. like nothing <laughs> yeah. I've ever seen. But <laughs> well, I think the big impact of artists like that, or like you know, something more simplified, if it's just words or letters, you know, shape, mm-hmm. color, you know, things. Uh, mural mural art, you learn, um, you know, to look at things more simplified. You know, you get caught up like what am I, and, and when I say fine art, I'm doing the hyper realism stuff, super ultra realistic. You know, not too crazy. That can get gaudy, but your uh, fish is amazing, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you. I yeah. can't wait to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I gotta, f- I gotta finish the second one. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just learning to you know simplify things and and abstract things in a certain way. Um, it just gives you a different way of seeing, which is big, I think, in art. You know, and I don't want to be too tied down to one style. A lot of artists get that way. I respect a lot of realists out there that that train at these classical schools, but they all paint the same. 
you know, and I don't want to be that way. I could go to one of those schools and do that, but, uh, you know, I'm interested in kind of exploring everything, you know, like I'm studying letter, like letter creation right now and, and drawing and like, cause I want to learn that part of like the spray paint culture and, and, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I think, and, and talk can, you know, attest to this, like within uh mural, um, artwork, uh, I think a lot of it is is very graphic designy, and that's that's one thing I'm lacking. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to like dig more into that. You know, so and 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 when you're making concepts to like pitch for these, uh, you know, uh, calls for art, uh, you need to submit you know digital renderings and stuff like that. So there's so much that goes into it. You know, it moves from a sketchbook into Photoshop. You know, I'm on a Wacom tablet drawing stuff up, trying to make you know, an accurate, accurate representation of what I'm trying to do for these people. And it's, it's just tough to, there's so many different, uh, you know, sides to it, you know, so. Well, okay. Renaissance man. Uh, when I met you in a van down by the river, you were a musician and I had no idea this side of you existed. So do you miss that at all? Do you play ever? Like, yeah, yeah. We, well, I just played Saturday. We did, we had, uh, my new band, strange familia still need to get back to you uh, on the day. I think we're all okay. good. Oh yeah, that's a little insider right there. I didn't yeah. know. The line of yeah, things. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, we got. Strange, I've going. heard the name. Mm -hmm. Okay, great music. Uh, yeah, I still play. You know, I love my big thing. You know, when you first start in a band, you want to. Everyone wants to be famous or whatever. But uh, <laughs> you know, of course, <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> or whatever. That's your your delusion. Yeah. You know, that motivates you for a while. But now, you know, the big thing for me, and I'm a drummer. I just want to play. Mm. I just I like playing, and uh, the new band I'm in, great songs. So it's I. You know, we have practice twice a week. Don't play as often as I'd like. I that. don't know what the other kids are doing, but I see future ex boyfriend and he's yeah. Doing Tyler's good, so. they, they go yeah. at it. Yeah, Tyler's playing like the Nomads used to. The yeah. previous band, yeah. yeah, yeah. We used to play all the time, and I miss that. I like being in front of people. You know, mm -hmm. I want to play. You know, more big shows like the Twilights. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to do more of that stuff and like play at the Complex and the Depot and and things like that. You know, I don't need to be famous, but I want to play in front of people. It's just the the adrenaline from it is mm -hmm. is fun, you mm -hmm. know. What about how's it compared to like a mural in front of people? Do you drive by your own murals and be like, "Damn, that's good." It's fun to see the ones around or the the one around here. You know? <laughs> I like that, you know. I yeah. want to get them all over the place, but I don't know. It's different. I'm they they, they this town with my murals. Yeah, you know? They, you know, they they satisfy different parts of myself. You know. Yeah. I have to car uh, compartmentalize. Car compartmentalize. Compartmentalize. Yeah. Had a few beers. Uh, <laughs> really just yeah. one because it's like the greatest beer. In <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. I just have a lot of things I'm interested in. So it's it's nice to be able to jump around. But uh, yeah, art is like the main focus, obviously. But still love doing music. Cole, All right. So here's the big question. This is probably the similar question. I don't know if it is or not. Oh. Uh, first of all, I, want, I don't want to forget to ask, like, where can we follow you yep, and it. the work that you do? Uh, Instagram's going to be the I think he's place. really bad at this, though. you yeah. got to be better at your I need, Instagram. I do. Yeah. I, do. I need yeah. to put, What's your and handle? What is your, what yeah. is your Instagram? I'm it's, typing it in right now. Oh, my gosh. I don't even know. LJ. Okay. I told you he was bad. <laughs> that's, that's real bad. LJR the third. So I need to explain this. So my Instagram name, I changed it to LJR the third. Because but wait, wait, wait. What is it like? LJR underscore three or no, LJR? No, no, no. LJ. What is it like? LJR the third underscore. LJR T H E. No, no, no. LJR three R D. LJR three R D. LJR three R D. Okay. So, <laughs> a lot of muralists they have like a moniker that they go by, right? And that's what LJR. That's what you spray paint on. The That's thing. what I'm gonna do. Paint on so the thing. Okay. my dad, when they were growing up, they used to have a a bunch of nicknames like uh, between their group of friends. Um, so his was uh, L J Roadfish the third. Mm. And that's I want to have like a mural. Mm. I think I'm gonna use that as my mural name, LJ my R. muralist okay. name. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'm gonna come up with something like to the third degree or something. I'm yeah. gonna, I need to come up with like a logo for it, but. Yeah. LJ, it stands for LJ Roadfish. Larry J Roadfish. Is oh, I like that. Yeah. Roadfish's last name, or what's the? It's uh, no, they got a buddy whose last name was that, but okay. they would all they all adopted it and had their own renditions of it. Yeah. So I took it from my dad. Larry know. Larry J Roadfish the third, like LJ that. Roadfish the third. Yeah. And in the very least, we'll just look you up. Call uh, Cole Eisenhower. Yeah, Cole Eisenhower. Wait, wait, yeah, Eisenhower. Eisenhower. Uh, Eisen. It's spelled Eisenhower. I know. Yeah. 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 
E but it's Eisenhower. Eisenhower. E I S E N H O U R. Yeah. Yeah, it's deceiving. All right, Cole. This is this is where you get to talk about your dreams and aspirations. What's like the end product look like? Who are you in like twenty years? Mm. Or five years? Or five? But ten? Yeah, ten. Split it. Yeah. If I if okay, traveling around, I would like to travel and do murals, and I'd also like to be all over in galleries and selling fine art. It's all doable. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, that's like where my mind is. Okay. Getting in galleries. Is have you been doing this long right enough now. to give it any advice to up and comers? What have you learned so far? I, I've been doing it a while. I don't know everything. I think the biggest thing what? is <laughs> what? <laughs> I was going to ask you all. You know everything, right? No, I mean, that's simply a given at this point, isn't it? Nah, I know people a lot think of stuff. I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of stuff. I don't know everything. I think the biggest thing for me, like. Coming from an athletic background, because I was like a serious Yo, workout college, more. Yeah, <laughs> I just I treat art like I did my training. Like yes. you have to just you just have to work hard. Yeah. I just think there's no other way to it. Are you pretty self disciplined. Yeah, yeah. I get out. I I'm jealous. I'm at, I'm at it. I get at it. Some days are better than others, but yeah. That's how you get to the next step. Yeah, you just have to. Some days I don't want to, and I still do it. Thanks, Cole. I'm so happy I learned that you were way more than, than a... You know, <laughs> <laughs> although, that's fine. Yeah, although, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, not layers. that that's bad, but... There's yeah. layers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely layers. I'll always be a musician. Love that. <laughs> <laughs>